So just like the term PSYOP, whenever I hear someone say humiliation ritual, it makes me think you're an idiot. Just because someone is more successful than you doesn't mean that when they're doing something that makes them the butt of a joke, it's someone forcing them to do it in order to stay famous. They're already famous. It would make more sense for a humiliation ritual to consist of something that declines their career, not hey, you're something that's gonna boost it. Humiliation doesn't involve risk and reward unless you're on fear factor. But common sense thinking like that doesn't exist in people who believe in that nonsense. So when those people see someone like, I don't know, an actor promoting their new movie, they're like, there's no way someone would do this. Someone's actually controlling them. Are we gonna see it uncensored? There's no way someone would do this voluntarily. Did anyone, has anyone said this was a PSYOP yet? This was an, this is a fucking PSYOP. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, recently at the Oscars, John Cena came out to present an award where he was basically naked except for a sign covering his hog that said costume design. Obviously, this was done to promote his new movie, Ricky Stanicky. Now, any normal person who would see this, and even without knowing about his new movie, would be like, this is John being classic John. It's not like he's exclusively a wrestler still. He has established that he can be funny. And this, to anyone who doesn't have a fucking grudge against his rap career is objectively funny. But when you're someone who has tried to become famous only to get in more trouble than you already were before everyone knew you, then yeah, I would start making up nonsensical claims about other people to make them look bad. Obviously, I'm talking about Andrew Tate, who has gotten popular, don't get me wrong, but there has been a significant slowdown in what was a pretty consistent rise in fame. There was a time where Andrew Tate would get mentioned on all the major social media apps daily. But now, with everything he's going through, like being in jail, randomly being stopped by the police, accused of rape and human trafficking, don't forget that one. Even being arrested as of yesterday because they were afraid he was going to flee Romania. Now, when we look at all of that, compared to what John Cena did, what really looks like the humiliation ritual? The guy who's getting paid to promote something he was paid to make, or literally not being able to leave your country because they think you're a sex trafficking rapist? I don't know about you, but I feel way more offended if my government started calling me a rapist. But of course, that's not going to stop them from running their fudging mouths. Yesterday, during one of Andrew Tate's streams that he actually calls emergency meeting, he starts talking about the Oscars and how basically everyone who wants to be extra famous has to eventually make a deal with the gaykeeper. Not the gatekeeper, but a gaykeeper. The Crypt Keeper's fucking flamboyantly gay cousin who's gonna make you do gay things in order to stay famous. He's so evil. And then you're gonna realize that sooner or later you're gonna come up to a gaykeeper. And a gatekeeper is either going to be a publicist, a manager, an agent, a production company, a streaming platform. It doesn't matter if it's YouTube. It doesn't matter if it's it doesn't matter if it's Warner Brothers. Sooner or later, for you to be well known, you're gonna have to do a deal with the people who are in charge. So literally, exactly what he did when he signed a Rumble. He even says that it could be a streaming platform, but then stops himself after mentioning YouTube because he knows that if he goes any further with that, Rumble is going to slip out as one of his examples. A streaming platform. It doesn't matter if it's YouTube. It doesn't matter if it's. It doesn't matter. It's like he's looking into a mirror talking to himself because that had to have been exactly what he did. Before he went viral back in 2022, he already had a bunch of money, the MMA career, been on TV, but then out of nowhere, he just skyrockets in popularity and then after gets exposed for sex trafficking. Whoever he made a deal with obviously wasn't a gatekeeper because they're like, this isn't the fucking 50s, you dumb piece of shit. I'd make you black if I wanted to humiliate you. You would arguably get more support if people thought you were gay. But as he's talking, you can see his brother Tristan drawing this line graph, and I don't watch these guys enough to know if they're just really good trolls, but the way he explains what needs to happen in order to become mega famous is like if they were doing a high school presentation on the spot because they didn't have the original presentation ready. As you can see from the diagram here, the blue line represents people like me and Andrew. So you have the fame axis and the success axis. So you start from nowhere. Everyone is here. Even you watching at home are here with no success and no fame. Me and Andrew are what the blue line should have been. And the blue line goes up here and this, this line here that, cert, that intersects our graph is the gay line gay line. Alright, so him and Andrew are the blue line as signified by the blue marker, and then the gay line is also signified by the blue marker, even saying it twice so we know that it's the dreaded gay line that nobody wants to be close to. Is the gay line gay line. So you know what that means, guys? Yes, Andrew and Tristan have finally come out of the closet. If I was an asshole, I would have titled this video Andrew and Tristan Finally Kiss Not Clickbait, but this is more than enough for me.
I'm a simple man who enjoys the complex things in life. And if you don't turn gay at this line, what they do is there's a matrix attack which spirals your fame into oblivion, or that's what should have happened. That's what the, the standard operating procedure is. There's the gay line, there's the go to Israel line. There are lots of lines that they want you to go through. Put on the little hat line. Yeah, guys, there's a doing blackface line, hating on gay people for no reason line. Oh yeah, and don't forget the being accused of rape line. They already crossed that one. Me, I would have just gone the gay route, so long as people don't think I'm a rapist. I don't think they understand that being slash doing something gay is nothing compared to what they're accused of. But me and Andrew didn't dis we decided not to bow to demands. And the plan was for us to spiral to zero. And they've done this to many people. They almost did it to Alex Jones. I'm gonna do I'm gonna draw some lines of people's success. Whereas this is the success in gay line. So let's say you release a song. I don't know. I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna completely normal song, a good song. And you get a level of fame and success and you get to hear. You better embrace the gay because then your fame, this black line is Lil Nas X and that's not a racist joke, goes all the way up to the fucking sky. This is what should happen to people who don't bow, and this is what ha happens to people who do. I like how the only two people he brought up were Alex Jones and Lil Nas X. Alex Jones didn't have his career come crashing down because he didn't want to come out as gay. He's a piece of shit conspiracy theorist who will say anything that goes against what the government says. There has never been a point where Lil Nas X and Alex Jones have gone to the same point in their careers to where if someone was controlling them, it would be the same person telling them what to do. Alex Jones would have a fucking magic eight ball telling them what to do. Which kind of makes sense if you look at the situation he's in now. But oh no, that's not a humiliation ritual. That's not a 1.5 billion dollar humiliation ritual. But now listen to how Andrew Tate explains why John Cena did what he did. If you don't have your own platforms, the gatekeeper will stop you. When they give you the offer and you say no, if you say no, you're deleted from YouTube or your publicist fires you or no production company will allow you to be in their movies. You basically have no choice. It's very rare for you to be famous without somebody in charge of you. Even if you're on a sports team, you have a contract. Yeah, no shit. That's how those businesses have been running for years. And it's not because they don't want you to get famous. It's because there needs to be a buffer between everyone who thinks they have a good idea and people who know they have a good idea. And having a manager that knows how to properly contact someone creates that buffer. It's not a fucking gatekeeper stopping you from getting famous. This isn't a fucking Goosebumps book that's meant to scare gay children straight. So when you're a little person here with dreams and aspirations and you want to become anything entertainment based, you don't realize you're eventually going to come up to the most important decision in your life. And that decision's coming. And no matter how good a person you think you are, the time it's finally laid on the table, it's actually very difficult for most people to say no. For claiming not to have done any of this, they are pretty knowledgeable on the step-by-step -step process someone goes through. Did you see that arrow he drew pointing that labeled the guy gay? Or what, whatever the fuck that means? The time it's finally laid on the table. It's actually very difficult for most people to say no. It's almost impossible for people not to do that. And then you're like, impossible for what? For them for them to be gay? That's that, that's fine with me. And he's like, no, the blue line means you're gay. And he's like, I thought the blue line was representing you guys. And then what about Tristan's drawing of that guy? Of the, the fucking dick. You're telling me that's not supposed to be in blue? That seems pretty gay. What are we even talking about here? What the fuck? What? I it's actually very difficult for most people to say no because... One, they're offered a bunch of money. Two, they're offered for their dreams to come true. And three, they know if they say no, they never get another shot at it. And these people don't want to give up on everything and go work in McDonald's. So they sit there and go, oh, you know, everyone else does it. Maybe it's not so bad because they're not principled men like my brother and I. Yeah, me and my brother have two principles, rape and sex trafficking, not in that order. This retard is literally describing a Disney movie scenario where a kid is given the choice to become corrupt or stay true to his values and help out the less fortunate at the cost of some big reward that would have made him rich. He never uses any names because there is literally nobody in the entire fucking world who fits into what he's describing. There isn't an actor in Hollywood, there isn't an actor in the fucking world who has denied a role and the consequences have been them working at McDonald's. You sound fucking stupid if you think that. I was saying this morning on Twitter how John Cena 
yesterday at the Oscars was doing his humiliation ritual to satisfy his gay paymasters. And everybody's saying, oh, maybe he's just promoting a movie. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Let me tell you something. I don't care what movie I'm in. You could not convince me to do that. You could not convince me to do anything fruity or weird. It doesn't matter what movie I'm in because there's no need. I can promote it other ways. I won't do it because my principles are too strong. So to say he's only promoting a movie is still agreeing with me. You're saying he's promoting his movie for money because he sold a soul to his gay paymaster. Well, he was pretending to be an OnlyFans guy as the character of the movie and releasing OnlyFans content. So never mind the stupid drawing that his brother did acting like this was proving their point even more. But he says that he would never do anything fruity when he's sitting in front of a shirtless picture of himself petting a dog. Why did they have to oil you up to pet your dog? That picture, along with the word gay and this picture of a guy with his dick pointing towards you, is probably gayer than what 90% of actual gay people do on a regular basis. And also, no, no one is agreeing with you. When we say he is only promoting his movie, we mean he is only promoting his movie, not as gay paymasters are paying him to promote his movie. What if it was a girl who came out naked? Would you agree with the women who said this was their gay paymasters making them do it? Because that's how fucking stupid you sound. Being gay isn't exclusively for guys. If this was John Cena's humiliation ritual, then so was Holly Berry's topless scene in Swordfish that she got paid $500,000 for. And why do the paymasters have to be gay? I feel like there are a lot worse things a supposed paymaster can be than just an evil homosexual. Like a maybe a Cambodian. But if you guys were really curious as to what Tristan's drawing is here, or what like what this actually means, here is he ex here's him explaining it. This, by the way, so this is you. This is a gay paymaster. So apparently Ron Jeremy is the fucking gay paymaster and he's not even gay. So that makes this even more wild. But this drawing alone should tell you how valid these guys' conversation is. If I showed this to someone and said, hey, what was this conversation about? They'd be like, you paid a stranger to get gay with you at a, at a line, at a, you lined up with a stranger to get gay. You fucked a stranger on a line. You planked a challenge with a stranger naked on top of you. You went gay. You just, you're gay. Are you coming out to me? Is this you coming out to me? This would be something you see on a classroom whiteboard as a joke drawn by the class clown. Just because a male celebrity wears a dress and or gets naked and the only people who are making fun of him are the closeted gay homophobics, then it's not really a humiliation ritual because it's only the dummies who hate him for irrational reasons that are getting mad. It would make way more sense if they made John Cena go up on stage actually naked and then have to register as a sex offender after. That is literal humiliation. But when people are like, hey, that's pretty funny, I think I'm gonna go check out his movie. That's called you being a jealous little boy who wishes he was at John Cena's level of fame. Remember, the blue and the black line represent being gay, and according to Tristan, him and his brother are either the blue and or the black line. I'm pretty sure they're trying to tell us something, but I guess we'll have to wait until the next emergency meeting. See you guys tomorrow. Unless there is a catastrophic event like World War III, then I will unfortunately have to see you until everything dies down. Peace. I hope we'll crack.